everyone. Hope you're having a great day. You're listening to the RX Daily Dose. Today's episode is being recorded for Thursday, May 14th, and I'm your host, Ian Parnagoni. We update this podcast every week for healthcare providers, medical professionals, and anyone who has an interest in drug updates. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on all your favorite podcast platforms and social media, including iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and Instagram. All links can be found in the show notes below. This is our continuation for part two of this week's episode, where we have updates for you from the FDA for approval of Tabrecta for non-small cell lung cancer and approval of Farxiga as a standalone agent for the treatment of heart failure in adults. We'll also be giving our regular update on coronavirus numbers to date. I'll start with the big news from this week, or what at least I consider the big news. The FDA approved Apaglifosin, which goes by brand name Farxiga, for adults with heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction to reduce the risk of cardiovascular death and hospitalization for heart failure. Farxiga is also FDA-approved to improve glycemic control in adults with type 2 diabetes, in addition to diet and exercise, and to reduce the risk of hospitalization for heart failure among adults with type 2 diabetes and known cardiovascular disease or other risk factors. With the approval, Farxiga is the first in this particular drug class called sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors to be approved to treat adults with New York Heart Association's functional class 2 through 4 heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Similar future approvals may be seen in other products in this class such as Jardiance and Invokana. Heart failure occurs when the heart does not pump enough blood to support the body's needs. And this type of heart failure happens when the heart's main pumping chamber, the left ventricle, is weakened. Farxiga was shown in clinical trials to improve survival and reduce the need for hospitalization in adults with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Farxiga's safety and effectiveness were evaluated in a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study of 4,744 participants. To determine the drug's effectiveness, investigators examined the occurrence of cardiovascular death, hospitalization for heart failure, and urgent heart failure visits. Participants were randomly assigned to receive a once-daily dose of either 10 mg of Farxiga or a placebo. After about 18 months, people who received Farxiga had fewer cardiovascular deaths, hospitalizations for heart failure, and urgent heart failure visits than those receiving the placebo. Common side effects of Farxiga include dehydration, urinary tract infections, and genital yeast infections. Elderly patients, patients with kidney problems, those with low blood pressure, and patients on diuretics should be assessed for their volume status and kidney function. Patients with signs and symptoms of metabolic acidosis or ketoacidosis should be assessed as well. Farxiga can cause serious cases of necrotizing fasciitis of the perineum in people with diabetes and low blood sugar when combined with insulin. This application received priority review designation, meaning the FDA planned to take action on the application within six months because the drug, if approved, would significantly improve the safety or effectiveness of treating, diagnosing, or preventing a serious condition. The FDA this week also approved capmatinib, which goes by brand name Tabrecta, for the treatment of adult patients with non-small cell lung cancer that has spread to other parts of the body. Tabrecta is the first FDA-approved therapy to treat non-small cell lung cancer with specific mutations that lead to MET exon 14 skipping. Non-small cell lung cancer is a disease in which malignant cancer cells form in the tissues of the lungs. It is the most common type of lung cancer with up to 90% of all lung carcinomas falling into the non-small cell category. Non-small cell lung cancer occurs when healthy cells become abnormal and grow rapidly. One danger of this form of cancer is that there's a high likelihood that the cancer cells will spread from the lungs to other organs and body parts. Cancer metastases consists of a sequential series of events 
and Met Exxon 14 skipping is recognized as a critical event for metastases of carcinomas. Mutations leading to Met Exxon 14 skipping are found in 3-4% of patients with lung cancer. Tabrecta is a kinase inhibitor, meaning it functions by blocking a key enzyme that results in helping to stop the tumor cells from growing. The FDA approved Tabrecta based on the results of a clinical trial involving patients with non-small cell lung cancer with mutations that led to MET exon 14 skipping, epidermal growth factor receptor wild type, and anaplastic lymphoma kinase negative status, and at least one measurable lesion. During the clinical trial, participants received Tabrecta 400 mg orally twice a day until disease progression or unacceptable toxicity. The major outcome measure was overall response rate, which reflects the percentage of patients that had a certain amount of tumor shrinkage. An additional efficacy outcome measure was duration of response. The efficacy population included 28 patients who had never undergone treatment for non-small cell lung cancer and 69 previously treated patients. The overall response rate for the 28 participants was 68%, with 4% having a complete response and 64% having a partial response. The overall response rate for the 69 participants was 41%, with all having a partial response. Of the responding participants who had never undergone treatment for non-small cell lung cancer, 47% had a duration of response lasting 12 months or longer, compared to 32% of the responding participants who had previously been treated. The most common side effects for patients taking Tabrecta are peripheral edema, nausea, fatigue, vomiting, shortness of breath, and decreased appetite. Tabrecta may also cause serious side effects, including interstitial lung disease or pneumonitis. Tabrecta should be permanently discontinued in patients with these side effects. Tabrecta may also cause hepatotoxicity, and healthcare professionals should monitor a patient's liver function tests prior to starting and when taking Tabrecta. If a patient experiences hepatotoxicity, Tabrecta should be withheld, dose reduced, or permanently discontinued. Based on a clear positive signal for phototoxicity in lab studies in cells, patients may be more sensitive to sunlight and should be advised to take precautions to cover their skin and use sunscreen and not to tan while taking Tabrecta. Tabrecta was approved under the Accelerated Approval Pathway, which provides for the approval of drugs that treat serious or life-threatening diseases and generally provide a meaningful advantage over existing treatments. The FDA granted this application breakthrough therapy designation, which expedites the development and review of drugs that are intended to treat a serious condition when preliminary clinical evidence indicates that the drug may demonstrate substantial improvement over available therapies and priority review designation. Tebrecta also received orphan drug designation, which provides incentives to assist and encourage the development of drugs for rare diseases. And for the coronavirus this week, and these numbers are as of Wednesday, May 13th, total worldwide cases for the coronavirus rose to 4,412,601, and total deaths worldwide rose to 296,991. In the United States, total cases rose to 1,426,397, and total deaths rose to 84,940. We'll keep you updated as things continue to evolve with the coronavirus. And that's all I have for right now. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll include all links in the show notes below, so please go back and check those out too. Please connect with me on any of your social media platforms and give me feedback on what you heard today. I'd love to know what you thought about the episode. And as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. And thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.